Guacamele Super Turbo Championship Edition. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Bring Me Joy Con. So, today we're going to talk about Guacamele. And I ain't even gonna lie, I'm gonna pull this right from Wikipedia. Guacamele is a Metroidvania action platforming video game developed and published by Drinkbox Studios. The game was released for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita April 2013 and was later ported to Microsoft in August 2013 and to OS X and Linux in February 2014. An enhanced edition entitled Super Turbo Championship Edition was released for the Wii U. So, <clears throat> that's the version I have. That's the only version I've ever played is the Super Turbo Championship Edition. I actually thought that when it, I first played it, because I, I, I played it on the uh, PS4 because it came out on that um, in July 2014. And I thought that the creators were just being funny and giving their game a ridiculous long name and <laughs> trying to make it sound cool. Uh, I, I did not realize that there was actually an original version of Guacamele. So, <clears throat> the game draws its inspiration from traditional Mexican culture and folklore. So you're a luchador, and, you know, you, you got your little mask on, and you're kind of buff, and, and you go around, and uh, you follow this very interesting storyline, and you fight a lot of bad guys. I mean, it's it's side-scrolling platformer at its best. Um, to me, I mean, this is like right up my alley for games that I play. As as far as like the style of game, I knew the first time I saw it that I had to try this game. I really like the art style of the game. I really like how Chador mask and and the enemies um, clothes are like almost like this neon-y brightness where like the backdrop is more of, of like darker uh like brown kind of everything's like made of like dirt and clay and all these different places you go explore and uh I really liked that about the game because it kind of made the characters really pop I also really like the controls of the game. You really feel like you have control over Juan. And I really like the upgrades. Um, every now and then you'll you'll uh, level up and, and you'll be able to um, unlock these as you find some of these different um, upgrades throughout the game. You'll learn new moves. Of course, the new moves are required to progress in the game, so, like, right after you learn a new move, like this cool headbutt move, you can start breaking these certain colored walls out of your way with your headbutt move. Um, there's this other move that's sort of like an uppercut, and it works for, for hitting enemies, but it's also good for getting to certain areas. Um, sometimes you have to, like, let yourself fall to get past something and then uppercut to go up underneath it. So, like, I really like that, that they've sort of incorporated your attack moves into the platforming itself. There's also this very cool move where you can do this wall jump sort of thing. It kind of reminds me of, like, the old uh, Mario wall jump. So... Um, as far as that stuff goes, it, it keeps the game very interesting because you're pretty consistently learning these new moves and it adds a new element to not only your fighting, but the gameplay itself every time you learn one of these new upgrade moves. As far as the plot goes, um, really the storyline, I mean, it's there, but it's not really the main focus of the game, in my opinion. It's it's there to, to give the the character up a point to why he's going to all these different places but um basically you play as Juan you're going to save the uh president's daughter and that's about it the skeleton dude stole her and you go on all these different adventures and and these different areas these caves and stuff 
And, I mean, the story really isn't deep, but the, the gameplay, in my opinion, is so rewarding. Like, some of the best games have a pretty bland story. Think about, like, Mario and, like, Bowser Steals Princess. That's it. That's that's your whole plot. Um, but as long as the gameplay is good, it doesn't matter. And uh, that's kind of how I view this one. Like, half the time I, I when I was playing, I forgot there was even a, a point of what I was, you know, I forgot there was even a storyline because I was just so wrapped up in the actual gameplay itself. You can also purchase different looks for your characters, so like different costumes and stuff. I'm not really into that. I'm sure some people are, and they think it's cool. Generally, when I'm playing video games, I don't really care what the character look like, or I, I just, you know, they look like they did on the front of the box, so I'm good with it. Um, unless it adds some sort of special abilities or anything like that, like, say, in, like, Breath of the Wild, how the costumes change your abilities, um, or, like, boost certain things, I don't really worry about it. So, in this game, I generally just keep the same clothes. I did purchase a few things, um, just because I had all, all this money I'd collected through the game, and I was, you know, wanted to try out everything in the game, so, um, I did purchase something and swap his clothes once or twice just to check it out but um, and then the other thing that I really thought cool about this game which I actually wasn't expecting is that there is a co-op mode and if you look at um, you know search it up online all I could ever find was that there was two player co-op but on my switch copy it does say at the top of the screen, player two start, player three start, player four start. So that tells me that there's actually a four-player co-op, which um, if I had four people to play with, I think it would just be absolute chaos on the screen, but it could probably be a lot of fun, actually. And uh, so, you know, hopefully I can have some friends over for pizza or something and, and do some four-player guacamole. That would be pretty ridiculous, but um, yeah, it sounds like fun, so... And it, it kind of it makes me think of, like, old uh, four-player games like like uh, Turtles in Time or, or something like that. Like, some of that stuff is really fun to play with four people. And, like, two players pretty good, but four players better. So, um, anyway, guys, uh, I just wanted to show off this game because it's a pretty cheap eShop game. And it's a lot of fun. The first time I played it was on PS4, and so I was really hyped that it was coming to the Switch, because, as I've said before, uh, anything that I like that comes to the Switch, I'm going to get, because the Switch, to me, is the better way to play. Most people would say, oh, no, 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 you know, you need the better graphics and all that stuff. But to me, if you've got the option to play in handheld and take it with you on the go, that's better. I'm not blind. I'm not... I don't understand this whole thing where you have to have 4K all the time. Like, for some games, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, if I'm playing, like, Horizon Zero Dawn, those graphics are incredible. And, and the landscape is amazing. And, yeah, that would be super cool to see in 4K. But Horizon Zero Dawn ain't coming to the Switch. And there's really not a lot of stuff like that on the Switch. So I uh, I prefer, you know gameplay over graphics almost every single time and so i had to pick it up and um, let me know if there's any other games you guys want me to review because i'm i'm just trying to review as many switch games as i can and uh yeah that's it uh follow me on twitter follow me on instagram join the discord have an amazing day